do you think about geocentrism and the flat earth? Not much, actually. I never think about them, except when I'm asked a question, as I have been tonight. But I expect that what the questioner is thinking about is the very important fact that science changes. If we had been having our lecture 500 years ago or so, you might have been seriously interested in asking me what I thought of this heretic Galileo. Goodness me, he is claiming that the earth moves. Have you ever heard such a heresy? Well, it took about 1,700 years to settle that, but I suspect most of you believe that the earth moves. Science changes, and it is a healthy reminder to think that science changes. Sometimes, I was told this in Latvia recently, well, in the olden days, they believed the earth was flat and the earth was at the center of everything. But now we know that earth is a tiny planet revolving an undistinguished star far out in the arms of a spiral galaxy. Galaxy. In other words, astronomy has dethroned the earth from the center of the universe and man from the center of all things. Vast universe, ancient universe. How can little humans have any significance whatsoever? My answer to that is quite simple. First of all, position in the universe doesn't determine importance. Your importance does not necessarily rest in what part of Madrid you live in, although it might do a little bit. Secondly, the universe is vast and it's old. But if we ask, could there be a reason for that? The astrophysicists will tell us, well, look, you are made of carbon. And if you want to get carbon in any quantities, you have to have an old universe. And since it's expanding, it will have to be a very vast universe. So it's exactly the opposite of what is being suggested, that human beings must be vastly important because it took a colossal universe for them to live in. And then our size, we're very tiny. But how are you measuring size? Linearly or logarithmically? If you use logarithms, a human being is almost exactly halfway between the size of an elementary particle and the size of the observed universe. So perhaps we're not that small after all. You can look at things in different ways and with different perspectives. And science has corrected our thinking about certain ideas. Let me illustrate one of them. Before the time of Galileo, and the reason he got into difficulty, was that the Bible claims the earth does not move. God has placed it on its foundation so that it should not move. And there it is. And people say that Galileo is a, a real example of what I denied at the beginning of my lecture. I said it's not a war between science and religion. And they say, but look at Galileo. Look at how he was persecuted. Well, he wasn't exactly persecuted. But we need to realize historically that Galileo was not first attacked by the Christian church. He was attacked by the Italian philosophers. And why was that? because Galileo was going against Aristotle. They all believed Aristotle, the earth doesn't move. Now the church had interpreted certain statements in the Bible as agreeing with Aristotle. So every one of them was an Aristotelian. And so Galileo, who incidentally believed in scripture all the way through, he was challenging a reigning scientific paradigm 
a believer in God challenging it, and he turned out to be right. Now, we smile at that because we have come to see that although the Bible could be interpreted as indicating that the earth didn't move. You don't have to interpret it that way. It's poetic language saying that this earth is stable. Now, if I were to say, why is the earth stable? I'd have to talk to you about an inverse square law of gravity, the existence of our moon, the existence of gas giants and all of that. Those are things that were not understood in those days. So if they believed that it didn't move, that was fine for many centuries because everybody believed it didn't move. But once you had Galileo, who was a moving earther, you can see the little group of moving earthers getting bigger and bigger and bigger until there came a tipping point. And no one is in this room, I think, is a fixed earther anymore. So we can learn a great deal from history about these things. And it's a lesson that science can change. Some people are challenging at the moment the idea of a beginning to space-time. One of the reasons for doing that, they will say, is because it's too close to the Bible. Now, I told you I was old. I remember the 1960s. Wow. And I remember when the first scientific strong statements about a beginning started to be published. The very top people in British science resisted it. Our top scientific periodical nature, they wrote and said, we must not go along with this. Why? It sounds too close to the Bible. And the irony of that is one of the greatest cosmological discoveries of the 20th century was resisted because it appeared to echo Genesis 